Alrighty, g'day collaborators and welcome to this programming video. Today I'm going to be experimenting with using physics for motion. Um, I've already really done this for uh, this game here, but I'm going to actually do an actual principles of it using rigid bodies for the purposes of this video here. So this is the uh, a testing stage for my game that I'm creating. Uh, a little piece of information about that, I'm not going to be as silent about it anymore. Um, it's a tower defense um, and it includes a lot of physics based uh, aesthetical ideology sort of thing. Um, as you can see down here, this is the general game view of what it's going to look like in the end product. But right now, let's have a look at this uh, money. What the fuck? <laughs> at this um, money object here. So my basics, basics goal for this is when this money object spawns, it will explode outwards in a random direction, and then wait for a few seconds, and then it's going to fly towards the money storage bin here, and then form into a giant cube. That's my goal for this. Um, here I've already got a lot of code to help me with uh, all of the utilities and the foundations of this. Um, I'm not going to go through all of these, I'll only go through it when I need it. Um, but we're mostly going to be focusing on this bit class, which I'm going to split into this bit and then a flying bit class, which is going to be, which is going to turn into the bit storage. Um, and then, oh sorry, the stored bit, sorry, flying bit's going to turn into stored bit. Anyway. Um, we're also going to be using this circle path code when it comes to the store bit, um, and I'll explain that when I get to it here. Okay, so, first off, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new, uh, this is in bullet class. Why does it always go to the bullet class? I want money class, damn it. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and create a C-sharp script called flying bit. Um, and this is what, this is the money object that's going to be appearing when, um, okay, so I need to close this version down. Yep. It's going to be appearing when an enemy dies. So I've got some some functions in here which I want to move over, specifically this one, which is the most important one. What this on trigger enter does is that this one will look for a a trigger which is around this money object here, this money base, that trigger, and it will look for this specifically to say, okay, I've reached the money base and now I'm going to turn into a stored bit. But right now I'm a flying bit, so that's what that is doing. So this needs to inherit the bit class because the bit class contains all of the important details like the storage that it's going to and the location indices where it's going to end up sitting. So this set location and this set location needs to stay here and this awake needs to go to, uh, essentially, actually I can probably just copy and paste this entire thing because this bit class isn't gonna have an update in it. Um, it is just gonna be a standard for the um, variables that we're gonna need. So that's all for the bit class and that's fine. So let's go back to the flying bit and go ahead and replace this start with this awake. Okay, good stuff. All right, so this is this is where we're gonna be happening in the um, update here. Also, I'm gonna move this uh, require component from here to here uh, because I was going to have it set up in bit, but then I don't want bit storage to have a um, rigid body on it because that would take up too much space and I like being optimized. Okay, so here's the required component type of rigid body. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set that to an object I'm going to make sure that rigid body, rigid body, um, I'd like putting it RB. Um, and you can do this one of two ways. Uh, the way I like to do it is by saying, oh, actually, the way that's normal to do it is that you set it as a, like a private variable automatically. And in the await class, you go rigid body RB equals um, uh, get component. because that just looks for a component on this game object. Get component of type rigid rigid body and then that's how you can now reference to it the other thing that i the thing i like to do is i like to do this which is a, probably a little bit less optimized even though i'm talking about the guy who's always liking to be optimized um but this does save up a bit on uh, dynamic space so this actually this is just it turns this into like a pointer as opposed to an actual variable um, and so I don't have to actually need to store this as an individual variable. I, I, I just like the simplicity when it comes to this. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is that um, essentially I'm gonna have a couple of uh, control variables here which are gonna be booleans and this one's gonna be flying, um, which I'm gonna set to make sure that it's starting to fly. Um, and then I'm going to have, uh, I guess, a float being fly time, which is when it's going to start flying. Um, and then a float, of course, for fly speed, very, very important. Um, and I guess, well, the gravity is being stored in the rigid body, so that's perfectly fine. 
Uh, I don't need I don't need a specific float for that in this part area. Um, so fly time, it's always good to comment your code as well. So let's go ahead and see this. So fly time is specifically when the bit starts flying after creation. When the bit starts flying after creation. So fly time is going to be a measure of um, it's going to be a measure of time time dot time sorry time dot time plus um, a certain unit of time that I'm going to get into later. So it's going to be time dot time plus a certain unit of time and then that's that's what it's going to be when it starts flying. Um, uh, anyway, and we're going to set this as a random random something like one F or something just so we can have it but but it's going to be something specific that's going to get into later on in the development of this game like not going to be in this video. So it's going to be a measure of time dot time plus something and as soon as fly times fly time as soon as time dot time is greater than fly time then it's going to start flying and then when it starts flying this is when freaky shit happens in the update. So when it's awake we're going to go ahead and start fly time equals time dot time plus and I'm just going to use a magic number here one second that's fine um, fly speed is going to be something that's going to be set so I'm going to probably call it 10 I don't know I'm going to tweak this later on this is something that a game designer would do um, the program this is how the programmer and the game designer like intermingle with each other the game designer goes like oh, I don't like how that fuck move that bit moves so it's up to the programmer to be able to say you can change this variable here and that's fine uh, so that's that's that can be changed later on, which is fine, um, and this this also can be changed later on, which is fine. Um, but this is definitely something that the programmer will have to do. Anyway, so let's go ahead and go to the uh, update script. Um, of course, flying has to be set to false to start with. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say if time dot time is greater than uh, fly time. Actually, what I should do what I should do is if flying there we go immediately if flying and then I'm gonna have an else statement here and I'm gonna say if uh, time dot time is greater than fly time if time dot time is greater than fly time then flying equals true good stuff um, the other thing that we could do here is instead of having flying as a specific variable we can make it another one of these fancy get statements so what this get uh, I guess statement or something does is that it turns this into less of a variable and more of a pointer or just a read only sort of situation and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to return this phrase here so we don't actually have to worry about setting flying to true or anything like that we just need to return this phrase here and that means that um, as soon as fly t uh, as soon as time to time is over fly time then it's going to be a rise then it's going to set us true so easy peasy um, and it's going to update essentially automatically. So we can immediately just go straight to if flying, then that. Um, so this is what happens when it reaches its destination. So I don't need to worry about that at this point. All right. So now let's get to the freaky stuff using rigid bodies. All righty. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you this class. So rigid body, it's got a whole bunch of stuff. I'm most likely going to be using add force um, and add talk, maybe. Uh, or, or and there's this other, oh sorry, there's this other one somewhere called like explosion, um, uh, cause like you set a, um, uh, an explosion and then it will move away from that point, or is it relative force, add, okay, anyway, there it is, the first one, add explosion force, so it stimulates, it stimulates, it simulates an explosion effect at that given point, um, with that given amount of force and radius and whatnot, and it's pretty fun. That's gonna be what's gonna happen when it starts. So this actually, I'm going to put in here. Um, and I'm going to put uh, an explosion force of, I don't know, 10, um, and a position of, uh, huh. like this is gonna be a different position. It's, it's gonna be a separate position now, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make it, um, uh, I guess I'm just gonna make it random. Okay, so add explosion force is not going to be handled in um, this area. It's going to be handled once the um, 
the the bit gets created inside the monster that's going to fall off so it's not actually going to be handled in here so we won't worry about it right now um, I will put a explosion force later on um, but it's going to be as a sort of like a testing sort of grounds anyway so now flying flying this is what we're going to use with uh, the rigid body so right now I'm just going to do uh, rigid body um, add force at position Eh, no, add force, force, and the force is going to be pointing to a specific thing. Now, one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a code inside bit, and I'm going to call it, um, uh, I guess, dest. Dest is always a nice one. So dest, and I'm going to go to bit, and I'm going to say, I'm going to put it under here, and I'm going to go, um, protected dest uh, and I'm gonna use another one of those fancy gets no oh, protected vector 3 so protected vector 3 dest get here it is and I'm gonna say um, this is gonna be a little bit of a complicated code here because uh, if I look at this, what I want it to do is essentially get a force that is in the direction of the top of this cube here. Maybe even the center, I don't know. So if we look at this money cube in this box collider, it actually has a center variable that we can use, which is fine. Um, I'm not sure if I have to apply it to the transform in order to get it actually correct, because if we move this money base around, that center doesn't change. So it does look like I would need to add the um, storage bases transform to the box collider and then that will make it allow it to move towards the um, the center of this box here so if we go ahead and do that real quick um, I can go return uh, it's gonna be so so this this transform here is relative to the origin and it's going to be uh, like this one's relative to here in order to get the vector that goes between the center of this to the center of this I would need to start off at this going minus yeah minus this position and then plus the position of the um uh the center of that cube thingy so if i go here and i'm going to say return uh negative transform dot position this is the position in world space which is important uh specifically the position of the bit in world space um plus the uh storage stroge storage dot transform dot position um, storage.transform.position plus uh, and it's going to be plused by storage.getComponent uh, collider box collider dot center there it is so that's that's the vector that we're going to be using essentially this vector here if I go ahead and just go into flying bit and then say um, I'm gonna say uh, debug. Debug is a really useful class. Draw line, not draw ray. Draw line from transform dot position to dest. We should see a line that goes from the box, from this box to the center of um, this cube. Now let's see if this actually works as it stands at the moment. Uh, cannot be assigned to, it's read only, let's have a look, uh, flying equals false, that's right, I need to get rid of that, that was, that was my fault to begin with, let's have a look, and, yep, and play, so, okay, not set to an instance of an object, let's have a look, um, this just means that ooh, this location indices doesn't exist at this point, um, and this is that stored bit, that's right, because this has a stored bit variable on it, which is not what we want, um, if we just undo this, there it is, stored bit, um, so we need to remove this component and we need to remove, no, no, rigid body stays. We need to go to money and then put on the flying bit onto the money box. There it is, flying bit, and it has its nice little rigid body here. Oh, everything's fantastic. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and press play and see what happens. So nothing happens because it's a null reference exception. Let's have a look. Uh, all storages... Uh, this is looking at all storages here doesn't exist. Ah, because it's it's trying to pick it um, on the awake section and it probably should pick it on the start section. So if I go to flying bit, this one should be start because if we look at bit storage um, in the awake, where is, where is awake? Here it is, on, in the awake, that's when all storages gets um, gets made. But it, it this if it happens at the same time at awake, then it might actually 
try to reference all storages or it might actually pick this thing before it can actually get to making all these all storages and whatnot. So there you go. Um, and of course, this needs to be, this is a static object, which means that each object of bit storage needs to actually call the, um, or needs to actually call awake before anything else does. So setting this at start is actually the best thing that you can do. Of course, it doesn't really matter in the midst of a game because the, the, the money storage is going to be in the level before any bits are going to be in the level. But this just makes sure, like, I don't know, the rare cases where you start a game up and there's a bit already on there, this will ensure that those bits will go to a storage and it will be fine. Okay, so um, if we go ahead and go to the... Uh, let's, go, let, so let's go ahead into here and let's see what happens if we um, save this and just press play. Let's go. So nothing's broken, which is fantastic. And we can see that line. That line here is where the dest is going. So that looks like it's going a bit too far out, which is fine. And you can see it's sort of struggling to move. Um, if we go ahead and not use gravity, it'll start flying off in that direction. And it hits a collider. Of course it does. Why wouldn't it? So let's have a look at this. This cube here, does that have a... No. Well, it, this one doesn't need a box collider, so that's fine. This one is not a trigger, so <laughs> that's what we need it to be. So let's have a look. So, yep. And of course, I'm going to make sure that it has no gravity. Uh, which is something I can set up in, in the code here. So if we go to flying bit and at start, um, we go rb.gravity, use gravity, uh, equals false. I don't remember this all. I just I just give it a go and see what pops up. Um, like one thing that's always, imp like something that you can do is just type in your object that you've set it to or even just rigid body dot and then put a dot next to your variable and just have a look through all of the things. Um, these are all the, you know, the methods, and then these are particular uh, variables and whatnot. Um, this one is a really good one, specifically if you're making platforms. Um, if you need that platform for whatever reason to have a rig rigid body on it, but you don't want it to get affected by gravity, either just yet or in that moment, then is kinematic is what you're going to use. Anyway, um, so yes, so let's make sure it doesn't use gravity at the start, and let's see what that looks like just originally. So it's going to stop here, which is exactly what I want it to do, and that's perfectly fine. So that's, that's it's looking good so far, but something that I noticed that it starts immediately, which is not good. So we need to make, uh, let's try making that plus, say, three. Just something obscene, so it, it, we make sure that it gets it right. So it's not flying, and then it is flying. Okay, that's good, that's good stuff. Um, now I noticed that the, well, obviously the, um, the force gets less and less as it approaches it. So maybe that's not actually the worst idea. If we go ahead and make this instead uh, color of red. So we can go ahead and try that so we can see it a little bit easier. There it is, there's that red. So I guess that's not actually the worst thing ever. That's fine, that's fine, honestly, it's fine. Um, one great thing about using this type of physics to achieve this goal is that if I go ahead and place another, say, cube in the way, oh, what the hell? In, in the path of this bit, of this money bit, if I just go ahead and place a cube here, you know, cubes can be existing for whatever reason as part of this game. Um, this is how it's gonna interact. If you look over here, look up here, even, it's fine. Once it loads and then it goes like that, and then it just like, it just goes for it. That's gonna be what I'd want for this, uh, I guess, this system. And uh, it's gonna look, it's, it's just gonna look pretty darn good, pretty darn good. What did you want? So, um, yep. So the rigid body does look pretty damn good at the moment, um, and this is just this is what it's, it's just what it's gonna it's gonna end up looking like, um, which is all right. Uh, the only thing that I might uh, that I might add to it is I might actually make it like bounce off of objects, because um, at the moment it just kind of collides and then and then and then doesn't move at all. So what I can do is I can make it. Um, add an on colli collision, I think it's called void on collision enter. I believe I need to have collider O. Let's have a look at the docs. So if we go ahead to the docs here and we say on collision, let's have a look. Uh, it is on collision enter. 
scripting API Unity. We just go ahead and load this up real quick. My internet is shocking. So I'm just gonna wait for this to load up. Um, here it goes, all right. So if you look at this, uh, go ahead and look at the docs. You can see this on collision, enter, collision, collision. Um, so it is in fact collision. Uh, so we've got contact points and then we have, you know, the raid going to the contact points, the normal and whatnot. Um, and then you can play it as sound, but I'm not going to be doing that. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to do on collision enter and then I'm going to get points from the contact points and then I'm going to say, uh, I don't know, like I'm just going to explore the contact point thing. So if we go ahead and do this, instead of collider, it's going to be collision. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and say here, I'm going to say, uh, oh dot, what do you have in there? You have contacts, contact points generated by the physics engines. Do you have... You got the rigid body that you're colliding with. It seems like this, the collider you hit, okay. The game object, whose collider we're colliding with, that's fine. Um, relative velocity, the relative linear velocity of the two colliding objects. Uh, I guess I'd use that for transferring motion to each other because um, I'm pretty sure that includes like mass and whatnot. Um, but what we're looking at here is the Collision contact points, so contacts. So I'm going to go ahead and say, um, yeah, I guess for for each. Uh, let's see what what is what is contacts a type of contacts. God damn it, I hate that. All right, need it. X O dot contacts is a contact point. Okay, so for each contact point. Um, uh, CP in O dot contacts. Let's have a look. Okay, so CP, what do you have in you? You have a normal, which is the normal of the contact point. That's fine. Um, and then other collider, the point of contact, the distance between the colliders at the contact point, and the first collider in the contact at the point. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a normal force at the point to this um, game object, this rigid body. So I'm going to go RB dot add force at position. The force is going to be the normal of the contact point. So CP dot normal at the position of CP dot point. And that should make it bounce. Let's have a look. So if we go ahead and push play. Let's have a look at this cube. So after three seconds, it will... Yeah, sort of. I'd probably need to multiply it by some kind of scalar, this uh, normal here. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply it by, I don't know, let's just make it obscene for 10. Why not? And of course, um, I need to make sure that the rigid body isn't actually... Uh, no, I do want the rigid body to be active. Um, but I want it... To... Okay, so I want it to have gravity uh, until it starts flying. So this would be true. And then at the flying point... Um, RB dot use gravity equals false. And it's going to do that every single time. So I should probably put a um, if RB dot use gravity uh, RB dot use gravity equals false. Fuck. Fuck. <laughs> there we are. So if rigid body dot use gravity, rigid body use gravity false. There you go. Very nice. Easy peasy. Um, and now it's going to draw a line and it's just going to add the force to the direction of that. That's fine. Let's have a look. Does a nice looking bounce over here. And if we go ahead and look at this down the bottom side here, uh, this is what it's going to look like in game. Look at those bouncy boys. Very nice. Very nice. In fact, I might even make this even more obscene. Let's try and let's see if we can make this like 20 or something ridiculous like that. Let's have a look. So it does bounce a lot when it's, um, yeah, so it does that really nice. It does that really nice. Um, so what I'm going to do here is that I'm actually going to say if flying to make sure that it only bounces while it's flying. And it's going to be a really bouncy boy. So let's have a look. All right. There it goes. Incredibly bouncy boy. Good stuff, good stuff. Alrighty, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to be using this class that I made a long time ago specifically for this game project called Circle Path. What Circle Path is, is essentially it makes a 
um, object follow a specific semicircular path from a beginning to an end. And not only does it do it for static positions, like in this area here, I am scrolling up and down because I don't really have time to explain everything as a part of this. Um, not only does it do it for static things, it also does it for dynamic things, in which case it does it uses an end transform as opposed to a start and end point. So that's something that I'm really excited about because it's going to look absolutely fantastic. All right, so if we go ahead and look at stored bit, this one here, it has a location that it's going to go to, specifically location indices. If we look at flying bit and we look at the trigger enter, what this happens is that as soon as it hits onto the storage bin, it's going to ask if it is like not null, in which case it's, it's looking for the storage bit class of component of the um, object that it just triggered with. Um, if, it's, if, it, if it is a storage bit, it looks as if it is the storage that it was originally going to. If it's not the storage that it's originally going to, then it's going to ask if it has a vacancy. And if it is, then this is just going to become the new storage. And that's easy peasy. However, if it's not, um, it's going to continue onwards. So this one should actually be, if it's not the real storage, else, there we go. So if it is the 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 storage that we're looking for, then just go ahead and do that. Um, oh. Wait, no. I need to have it to be. I need it to tell if it's been if it has arrived. So I guess I should just have another bull here saying arrived, and that's obviously going to start off as. False. Very nice. Um, and here, it's going to say new storage, and then arrived equals true. And here, very nice. Um, and then this is going to come out here, and then I'm going to say if arrived, because if it hasn't arrived, I don't want it to do the circle path thing to its position because it's not arrived. So there you go. Um, all right, I'll be back in a sec. Alrighty, so we've uh, discovered if it's uh, arrived and if it's done everything else and it's fine. And then if it has indeed arrived, then it's going to set, find location, specific location indices, and then it's going to activate the stored bit, the stored bit class here. And what this does is that it kills the, I'm gonna make that instead of bit, I'm gonna call it flying bit. It gets the flying bit. There it is, the flying blit class, um, FB, FB, and then it destroys it. So it sets, it essentially copies the flying, the important parts of the flying bit class, which is the base bit uh, classes here, the storage and the location indices, and then it essentially kills the, um, the flying bit component, and then it kills the rigid body. We don't need either of those anymore. Okay, so now what it does next is that it adds this bit to the, um, the storage, uh, and then it will update covering neighbors uh, once it arrives. So I don't think this should be here, but I'll just comment that out for right now because I don't know what I'm doing. All right, so now we set up a new circle path. Good stuff. So once we go, once we set up this new circle class, I'm going to go ahead and make a void update class. And here, all I'm going to essentially do is I'm going to say transform.position equals cp.calculatePosition, uh, and then that's it. <laughs> that's that's my that's how my circle path class works. It just it just works. Um, I can run down the basics of it if this actually does actually just work at the at the beginning. So let's have a look at what happens. So this bit will fly, bounce off objects, and then boom, boom. Brilliant stuff. Look at how brilliant that is. Um, it, do it doesn't like work perfectly well because I need to make sure that it's rotated correctly. Um, you can see that's how that's kind of works. That's how it works. So this money object here is currently not sitting in the right position, but that is due to my programming being an issue. Uh, but the rotation is what the important part is, because if I can, I can just set all of those back to zero, and then um, it should be fine. Yeah, it should be right. All right. So if we go ahead and do go into my circle circle path class, and I'll show you a little bit about it. Okay. So we're just going to be looking at the static circle path class, because the dynamic circle path is just the same thing, except the endpoint, uh, the destination vector keeps getting changed based off of the transform. 
So when you start it, you will select a, oh, I should probably use this uh, start point, end point, start time and float speed. That's something I'll have to use. Um, so when you start it, you set these variables up and you go to have a look at this setup circle path class, uh, uh, method here. Uh, and so it sets the start point, the end point as original position and destination, um, and then it starts. It sets off the speed, and then the start time, and then yeah, the, the start time essentially. Like that's it's not really anything um, important about it. The um, the the real funky stuff happens up here with all of my get and return uh, my get statements here. Um, the important one is where's the important one? It's this linmult and sinmult or signmult. Um, Essentially, what this does is that uh, this oh, actually it's probably not actually linmult. Uh, no, yeah, it's horizontal distance and vertical difference. That's that's the one. Those are the, those are the two important ones. Whoops. So horizontal distance essentially gets the. Um, uh, it's not even calculate fucking horizontal position here. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. <laughs> So what this does is that it essentially applies um, a sine graph and a cos graph next to each other based off of x and y positioning. Because um, if we look at uh, position, turn base, okay, that's the dynamic one. Uh, calculate position here. Here we go. Damn it! This is the most important part here. So it looks at. Um, so if it's if the percent is less than zero, then it goes to original position. If the if the percent is at one, so 100%, then it just it applies it as the destination, easy peasy. This works for if you accidentally do like percent two, or the percentage just keeps going up, then it, it just immediately goes to the result, that's fine. Um, the Y position modifier is where the fun stuff comes in, because if we look at the Y position and we see this sign math here, with is just pi times the percentage. Um, so of course, we if we look at a sine graph, we notice that um, sine starts off at zero and then it goes up to a maximum and then at half pi, or sorry, if, at half of the period, which is at one pi, which is one pi. So at one pi, it's back down to zero. Uh, and if we go all the way to two pi, then it goes over here. But the reason why this isn't two pi and this is just pi is because of the fact that percentage is specifically going from zero to one. At the beginning, it's at zero and at the end, it'll gonna be at zero. Um, where the next one is, so that's fine. That's the Y position modifier. The original position, ca uh, the calculate horizontal position um, is when you add that to the um, vertical position, that's when you get fun stuff. So this calculate horizontal position here, um, it sees a scalar, which is the um, the cos multiplicand, um, it's like, like negative 0 0.5 is important because we need to make sure that it's at um, I'm pretty sure it's because we need to make sure that it's at, uh, like, it starts at zero, but it goes, it, it's only doing it for like half of the way. So it starts at zero and then it goes like this. We're only looking at the line that goes like that because we don't want it to go back downwards. If we were doing a full circle, then we'd go back downwards, but we're not doing a full circle. We're just doing a semicircle. So we're only considering half of it. So 0 0.5 to start and then it plus is 0 0.5 to phase shift. No, no, it, it, it adds it to the top. Um, so instead of going from negative one to one, it goes from zero to one. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. <laughs> um, and then it just does the normal pi percentage because of course at, um, at zero, it's at zero. And then in this case, since we've minus the, divided the amplitude by two or times to pi 0 0.5 at pi equals one or, or, or at, at cos pi at cos pi, it's going to be at the halfway point, which is at its maximum. So there you go. That's why this is important. That's why this is what happens. And when you add the two together, you get a semicircle looking path that goes right around it. Now, the reason why calculate horizontal position is so important is that we have this straight path here. So this straight path is found out up here, which is essentially just a straight path between the original position and the destination. And that's all it is. And then, yeah, that's that's essentially all that that is important for. And that's how it makes a circle path. Now, um, the fun part about this circle class is that you can actually use it for um, uh, rotation as well. Uh, and I need to remember how to do that. So I'll be back in a couple of minutes. Okay, 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 okay. I've, I've remembered how to do it. It's just a conceptual warping of what you consider to be um, like positions and uh, rotation. So the important thing to look at is this here. 
So this isn't actually the actual representation of angles that Unity uses. Unity uses these things called quaternions, quart quaternions, quart quart quaternions, or something like that. Um, but essentially, there's um, four different values. There's x, y, z, and there's also a w value. Um, and the w value, it's it's weird. Quaternions are weird, um, and don't worry about it. What these are are the Euler angles, the specific Euler angles that um, can be represented as a vector three. And position is represented as a vector three. Um, and when we play it until the point where it gets to, I guess I just just when it gets to the point where it collides with the um, the bit thingy, you notice that here we've got like when it started when it started moving, it had you know zero. It had it had a certain variable here, and then it just turned to that. I can do the exact same thing for the rotation. So I can go ahead and go to the circle path and make another circle path. Circle path. I'm going to call it CP rot. Um, and this one's specifically going to be looking at the um, rotation. So CP rot is going to be set up as a new circle path, and it's going to be uh, actually going to be um, so transform dot rotation dot Euler angles and then it's going to go to the destination or the endpoint is going to be vector 3 dot 0 so it's going to end up like this there it is it's going to end up like this it's going to end up like normal and fine um, the only thing that I have to do is that that ending thing is because of the how I've uh, calculated where the bit actually goes um, so if we go ahead and look at this bit storage area uh, thing here. Um, if we find where is it? Calculate position. There it is. Get position. I need to actually make up bit scale minus by a certain amount because if we look at it, if we look at the money base, this is actually where the basis of it is. If we look at the cube, the, the middle of money, that's actually like halfway up. So I, I guess I need to divide it by two. That's all I'm thinking of. Maybe not divide it by two, but minus it by half of the cube divisions. So if we look at this up, the pos y, the up bit scale, it needs to be um, pretty sure it needs to be minus um, what am I looking for? What am I looking for? Where was the funky things? Because uh, it's get position. Uh, but it's specifically. Because it's like it's this cube size here. Here it is. Oh, okay. I don't need to worry about adding the cube center to it. Okay, okay that's fine. That's fine. So if we go up to the origin point here, we can minus the. Where's the origin point? There it is. We can minus the uh, cube center just from that, and that should be fine. Should be fine. So we go ahead and do this, and then we just play it, and then have a look at what happens. Uh, the, oh, right, I haven't, I haven't actually applied that to that anything. Okay, so then we go back to um, flying bit, uh, and we, no, uh, stored bit, and we look at this uh, new CP rock class that we created, and we go ahead and go to update, and then we could just do this, literally just do this, transform dot rotation, um, transform dot rotation equals quaternion dot Euler, yeah. And it's going to be CP rot because we can't just set the Euler angles as this value. We have to go in a sort of roundabout sort of way. CP rot dot calculate position, and that's all it should be. So let's have a look. So the bit fly around, it does rotation, and then it doesn't do anything. Okay, so obviously something's wrong here. <laughs> um, but this should be all, all that should go, but I had have had a lot of problems with rotations and Eulers and whatnot. Um, so if we just play it again, uh, maybe something might happen, but like a, has Vas ever told you the definition of this insanity? Because he, I never understood it. All right, so yeah, if, if I just go ahead, oh, it's trying. What is it doing? It's trying its best. It is slowly rotating. Why? Why is it slowly rotating? 
Why isn't it just going to zero? This confuses me. Okay, okay, okay. I am just going to use linear interpolation because that seems like the easiest thing to do. Um, otherwise, it's just going to be really strange. So, um, let's have a look at the quaternion class because I'm pretty sure there's going to be a zero in that. Um, Because there's lerp, um, you can go from A to B, um, and then there should be a, okay, so there isn't really a zero, but what we can do is that we can set up a, um, I guess, a, a zero quaternion, a quaternion um, here, which I'm gonna say quaternion zero, uh, zero, rot, rot zero. Here it goes. Um, and what rot zero is gonna be is this is gonna be, um, uh, rot zero equals quaternion dot Euler vector three dot zero. Easy peasy. In fact, that should be its own thing inside one of those fancy bloody get variables right here. Return this, uh, not that, this. Very good. All right, that's fine, that's fine there. Uh, this CP rot doesn't have to exist anymore which is good stuff. Um, and then this CP rot doesn't have to exist because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go transform dot rotation dot, um, I guess slurp. Uh, no, 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 I have to do, um, no, yeah, yeah, I have to do uh, transform dot rotation, rotation equals um, quaternion dot, Lerp, or maybe slurp, because I like slurping. Um, <laughs> A, of course, is going to be transform dot rotation, um, and B is going to be uh, rot zero, rot zero, um, and then the parameter t is clip uh, delays by t. Um, this t is going to be a factor of um, time dot delta time. Delta time is the time in between frames of the game. Now that should make the um, box rotate to zero. Uh, what's this? After excessive look. Oh, this one. Yeah, there we go. There's there's the error. Found it. All good. No worries. Next. That's why the coloring was a bit off. So let's have a look. Boing and pop. And it moves very slowly, so I need to multiply it by something. Um, so we look at that slurp, I guess I can multiply it by like five. Let's have a look. Five seems to be a lucky number. It's not good to have all these magic numbers floating around, but... So let's have a look at the first Very nice. Okay, so now this is what you've been waiting for. So this box can hold a thousand money bits. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this uh, flying bit position here and I'm gonna instead of, doing, uh, instead of doing a flat of three, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a random between, uh, between uh, zero, no, not zero, um, three F and 10 F. There we go. Random between three seconds and 10 seconds, and then you know what I'm gonna do. Okay, so I've created a fuck ton of fucking bits. Let's see what it looks like. It's going to lag the computer out to shit, so I'm just gonna save everything real quick. Yep, saved. All right, let's have a look. Oh, fucking hell, dude. <laughs> okay, so it's good that I'm running this test here because it looks as though the um, the actual placement of the cubes is smaller than it needs to be, um, which is a bit of a shame. You can see how they're like moving around. I do need to add some kind of dampening on it so it doesn't just do that. Because um, like orbiting is, in a game, you don't want your money to be orbiting around the place. So I do need to add some kind of drag to it. Uh, if I just have a look at, all right, who's who's still spinning around? 
If I just have a look at this one here, um, it it doesn't have oh, it ha doesn't have any drag. It's at zero. So we need to add some kind of drag in it. So if we go ahead and go to the flying bit and go to RB, um, we're gonna go ahead and just set up some drag. So we're gonna go here. So I'm gonna go RB dot drag equals say zero point I don't know zero five. Let's try zero point zero five float. Okay, that's going to be one thing to take care of. The other thing I need to take care of is the actual calculating a position of the bit storage. I haven't been able to do that until now because I haven't actually managed to get the things to go to the bits. Um, and that happens here. It happens at this point here. Um, so the origin point is calculated by use of uh, the cube divisions and whatnot. Um, so that's going to be easy. It's a vector three of x, y, z. And that's fine. That's fine. Um, I feel like I need to do it by, what is size? Storage bed dot local scale dot X. This is storage bed, I'm pretty sure. Because if we look at money base. Um, okay, so where is storage bed? Where is storage bed set? If we look at uh, awake, where is uh, transform T components storage bed. Transform, all right. <clears throat> Uh, components in children transform if t dot tag money storage bed. This is the tag with money storage bed. That needs to be the money storage bed. This one needs to be the money storage bed, not this one. This one has to be untagged because um, it's just a normal. I can call it ground. Why not? Um, but untagged is better uh, because it's not ground or anything else. Because this money base thing is just the thing holding everything, whereas this is the actual money storage bed. So let's have a look and see if that actually works properly this time. So let's go. Um, one thing I am going to do before we start again is I'm going to make get this flying bit, and I'm going to disable the debug. There is that control line. I'm going to get rid of it. I don't need it right now because uh, otherwise we're going to have a whole bunch of shit. So let's have a look. Okay. Very nice. Look at that. Oh, <laughs> fucking hell, dude. Oh, <laughs> It looks great! Oh, shit. And they're all just filling up different sections. Okay, so I've already coded in two different ways. Okay, so if we look at this, um, it's still kind of hovering off the ground, which is not ideal. And it's... They're not actually moving in the right place. So if I have a look at this one, are you actually... Uh, actually, if I have a look at this cube, are you colliding with the cube next to you? No, you're dead on right in the next part of it. So it looks as though this last line here is not being considered in its position. Um, and obviously this last line over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add specifically exactly... So I've got 800 at the moment, so I just need 200 more. So if I, if I select this and go all the way down to 199, uh, that should be exactly 200. So I'm going to duplicate it, and then I'm going to move it out just over here somewhere. So that should be a thousand exactly. Um, because look at here, it says 999, and 999 plus the one that isn't numbered should make a thousand. So if we press play, that should fill up every single space on this cube storage. I don't understand how Unity in my computer can process this. <laughs> um, obviously, I'm going to need to use a much stronger uh, drag value. Um, but it's, no, it seems as though, yeah, there's these, uh, the sad positions are actually getting used, but they're not getting used as frequently as the other ones, which is, I mean, to be expected, um, so yeah, they're just kind of still orbiting, there it is, very nice, very nice, oh, that looks so good, it looks so good, fucking hell, dude, <laughs> I am so happy with this. Okay, um, all right. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and increase the drag. I'm gonna make that one. I'm gonna make it twice as draggy. So let's have a look. Um, this is this is now just the game designing point of view. This is not programming. This is now game designing, where we're just looking at specific variables and we're just gonna say, okay, which one looks nicer and which one performs nicer even. Um, so we're looking at that and then yeah, there they go. 
Now, the fact that it doesn't fill out this corner side as fast as the other ones is a little bit troubling. Um, and if we look at here, we've noticed that it's still floating somewhat. So we need to go back into here and um, we need to say, where's this origin point? So the origin, okay, so it looks as though I calculated it for the origin bed, but I didn't actually put it in the right place. So that's probably my fault. So if we look at bit storage here and look, go back to the origin, um, I did get rid of the um, cube center. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this. I'm gonna make it not plus, it's gonna be minus cube center because I do want it to go down by the factor or, or by the movement of that cube center. So let's have a look. Because um, I just need to stop it and start it again. And let's have another look at this because I just absolutely fucking love the look of this piece of shit. Look at this go! <laughs> Holy shit. How does Unity handle this? <laughs> I mean, it's unity for fuck's sake. Okay, so the fact that it does the back ones last is not good. I might just have to rotate the, um, the shape around, but I really want it to not fill out this last section last. I really want it to be as random as it should be. So if we go ahead and increase the time that the flying bits take in order to start by a factor of, say, 20. So 20 is fine. Uh, from 3 seconds to 20 seconds. Just so I get a bit of a slower sort of bit storage filling out. Oh, and if... Oh, okay, I've already changed it, so that's fine. Um, and if we um, look at... What are we looking at? Yeah, we will... Because um, I kind of want to see this uh, stored bit here. No, the bit storage, the way it calculates what random position to use is actually quite intriguing. Um, I feel like it's because of... Ooh... I feel like it's because of this here. It is. Yeah, it's inclusive and exclusive. So I don't need to worry about this minus one here. So that is the issue. All right, there we go. Because I thought it said uh, from min inclusive to min inclusive, uh, which means it'd go out of range if I tried to use it, but that was for floats, not for integers. For the integer random range, it excludes the last value, which is pretty fucking baller. So let's have a look. Oh. It looks great! It looks fucking good! <laughs> Shit! Oh, fuck. Okay, so now the other thing that I wanted to see was this, um, there's another bit of, uh, uh, what's the word? Optimization is this update covering neighbors and this check visible. If actually disabling it hides the inside bit, so let's have a look. It doesn't look like it. So all of these mesh renders are still being rendered, which is bad, um, but if we go ahead and select one of the ones on the inside, uh, like, they should be, like, inactive, essentially, is what they should be. They should be inactive. So if I go ahead and click on this guy, he's in the center, uh, 728. He's still active, which is not good. Uh, this is still active, which is also not good. Because uh, I want to disable the mesh renderer, the box slide. I just want to disable everything of it. So I just I just need that to be unchecked. So if we go ahead and have a look at where this box is, it's not actually there anymore. Um, so I, if I just do this and select a whole bunch of these ones, so like these guys, I don't want them to be visible if they're on the inside, so. But that's something, that's a bit of an optimization, which uh, which is something I can do later. But right now, this currently looks absolutely phenomenal. Uh, and I 100% and I am fully enamored with it. All right, so there's two ways that, this is, this is another section of the um, game designing aspect of making a game. Because there's two ways that you can fill out this cube. One, you can do it randomly, like I've chosen to show you here, or, if I just go ahead and go to, pretty sure it's in stored bit. If I go ahead and change this, there's one val there's one variable, one variable that I'm looking for, probably in bit storage. One variable, no, no, it's in, it's in bit, it's in flying bit, there it is. It's at this point here. This variable here, if I change this to false, it's gonna do it, it's it's not gonna be randomized, it's gonna, it's gonna do it opposite to randomize, so it's going to do it systematically. So we look at, it's filling out one side of the brick first, it's filling out one layer, and then it goes to the next layer. Honestly, I feel like that's the thing I'm going to actually going to do, because um, it still has a bit of, it still has a bit of aspect of randomization, because the blocks, the circle paths, actually aren't consistent, uh, which is kind of awesome, to be honest. 
Um, and you can see that the last ones getting filled are this area over here, which is actually the last bits of this one. So that's actually probably what I'm going to use because it seems most consistent. Because uh, what I don't want to have happen is like some blocks on the backside is missing and so the player can't actually see it because they won't be able to rota rotate the camera. Or maybe they can rotate the camera. I don't know. This is something I haven't gone up to yet. But this is complete and it's really fucking good. <laughs> Let's just have another look at it, because it's 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 just really cool. Alright, actually, one thing I want to try real quick. Actually, no. If I, um... I, I want to see what happens if I put all of these money cubes in the same location. So like this, and then I put them out just over here, up here, and see what happens. Because they're, they're going to explode outwards because their rigid bodies are colliding with each other, but I just want to see. I just want to see. Let's see what kind of chaos I can create. Go for it. Uh oh <laughs> this is never oh here we go oh explosion there we are of course there's some some cubes flying like look at that oh my god it's like a swarm holy shit if I just select everything I should be able to see them all yep there we go it's like a massive bloody swarm Holy shit. <laughs> so, if I just stop this and I'm going to use, I'm going to get rid of, say, um, I'm going to undo that last thing that I did. So I'm going to make everything spread out again. Now, if I get rid of, say, um, I don't know, 400 just around actually if I can just go to this much this many cubes Let's see what it's gonna end up looking like it should end up like a cube That's like half formed and there's like a section missing, but it's a recognizable shape It is specifically in a cube the thing that I absolutely am enamored with is the fact that it looks like it's building up Randomly, but it's building up in a sort of chaotic sort of order uh, And the best part is that it goes from like the right to, the, to the, the right to the left if I can make it go from the back to the front That'd be fucking mint um so we can see here that the last bits of it are building and there's still some cubes orbiting around which is not desired. Uh, I might actually make it so that after a certain amount of time um, it just immediately does the circle path to the, the cube section here. But you can see here that this is currently an incomplete cube and it did actually look like it's actually functioning so that's pretty fucking good all right uh, yeah that's that's all I wanted to show you for this um, that's how the money system is gonna work in my game um, and yeah that's I'm pretty I'm, I'm so keen about this yeah thank you so much for watching this little programming for aesthetics video um, I'm not sure if you learned anything I just thought it'd be look pretty cool but if you did learn something great good news um, but in in any sense yeah, that's that's all I wanted to say. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. This is Quillo and I signing off. Goodbye, and good luck. <laughs>